So for those of you that are that are lost or looking around, so we're we're here for the CSR portion, the special education portion of the of your training today. Um, so we're gonna start just kind of by going over some some elementary kind of stuff that we should we should know already. So these things you've seen before, some of these things you may not have seen before. Okay? Yeah. Alright. So so first thing. All right, once again, I'm going all the way back to what we talked about at the end of the year, a modification, okay? A modification, guys, is we are changing what is being presented to the student, okay? We're not changing it by taking one less option away, okay? We're not changing it by giving them an extra day, right? We have changed what is being presented, okay? Like me being in a science classroom right now, we're saying I'm going to, I need to, um, we're going to analyze the parts of the cell. Instead of analyzing the parts of the cell, I may list the parts of the cell. Right? I'm moving down that Bloom's taxonomy to be able to find out how we're going to meet that kid's need. Okay? I'm asking less of them for that same team. Okay? I'm still meeting that same team, just at a lesser level. Okay? So once again, the easiest way to do it is we can change the verb. Okay? You change the verb. You change what is being asked. Okay? So you may go from analyze to list to describe or some of those. Okay? All right? Uh, you can change the expectation. Okay? If a teak specifically says... That they must use, that they cannot use a calculator, but you're allowing them to use a calculator. That may be considered a modification in some instances. Okay, all right. Once again, change the T. All right, all right. Accommodations. So we're changing how it's being presented. Now we're going to the shorter assignments. Okay. Now we're going to where that you're given an extra day uh, or let one less answer choice. It used to be where they, everybody thought that that was a modification. Okay, guys. There's a huge difference between the, between the two. Okay, so when you look over there, it says how is the R, okay? So when you look at your, at your class roles, let me go back to the other one. It says the CM, right? So to the back of your, your course number, it may say CM, it may say LM, whatever that may be, that's long period modified or two teach modified, all right? When you go to the R, it'll say long, it'll say long, period, modif uh, long period R, or it'll just say R to the back of your course code, okay? That's how you know who's on that list, on which one of those. All right. Any questions on that so far? What does the R stand for? R. <clears throat> just a just a number we grabbed out of the sky, oh, okay. or a letter. And the reason is is because um, <laughs> the district assigns certain things that we can't control over. So we have okay. to take the letters that are left and just assign them. Okay. Are all kids who have modified um, instruction in a co-teach modified class? That's correct. Okay. They are. They'll either be in a co-teach modified class uh, for science social studies, so they could be in a resource class for math and math and English. Okay. Okay, good question. All right, how do I find out where my modifications and accommodations are for my students? Okay, we should know this because, right, self-learning in Scott by the case managers. If this has not happened by, by chance, you see a kiddo that this hasn't happened for, please let us know so we can have that fixed. We need to make sure we're meeting the needs of the student, okay? We have to meet the needs of the student. We're still liable for it, even if it's not uploaded to Skyward, okay? It's still our duty to find out how we can meet those kids' needs. So if we haven't seen it by now that those kids don't have anything uploaded to Skyward, how are we getting their accommodations and modifications if they're on our SPED list, right? All right, so once again, it's in Skyward, you open up the Help tab, you go all the way down to where it says, it says IHP, okay, and you open up the attachment there, there with it, okay? Everybody's been able to find that so far? All right, good. Okay, critical components. All right, this is the new stuff we're talking about. All right, so you have a critical component sheet right there in front of you. Okay, one of the handouts that you got. I'm gonna break it down a little bit more. All right, so the reason that the CSR is so important is because as a case manager, we have to be able to look at the critical components of how we're meeting that kid's needs, such as data. How does a disability affect the student's success in a general education setting? What does it look like by age-appropriate peers, okay? You're not comparing them to the other special education students you have in class. How does it look for its age-appropriate peers without a disability? That's how we have to gauge these kiddos, okay? So that's our data that we're looking for, okay? So we're filling those things out. That's the first thing you're looking for. Baseline, where do we start and how do we get there, okay? And what, where do we get that information? How do we get through rethink, through star information, benchmark, benchmarks, Moby Max? What does that look like, okay? It may be your daily assignments. It may be your warm-ups. Whatever that may be, that kind of check for understanding, where is that coming from inside there to get this baseline data, okay? Um, weaknesses and strengths. Based on the baseline, identify interventions for the students to assess the grade level curriculum, 
Okay? Sounds like a lot, right? All right. Based on the baseline, okay, identify interventions for the student to access grade level curriculum. What do they need? Right? How are they going to get to that grade level peer? How are you going to level that playing field for that kid? Okay? I know that's Mr. Lozano's big deal every year on 504. Guys, we're not changing what they're doing, we're just leveling that playing field. And they had that image of those kids standing in those boxes, right? Looking over the fence. And then, are you leveling the playing field or are you not leveling the playing field? How are we doing it to make it all equal for everybody? Okay? Which, by the way, the difference between fair and equal. Okay? Sometimes we have an issue in class to be able to say, is it fair to a kid or is it equal? I shouldn't have to do all this for this kid because it's not equal to the other kids in class. We're not asking for equal, we're asking for fair, right? That kid has a disability. He's in special education for a reason, or he's in 504 for a reason. What are we doing to make it fair for that kiddo? Okay, and then create a system to document, okay? Which could be data sheets, it could be rethink, work samples, uh, ABC data. Anybody know what ABC data is? Oh, I have questions. Oh, anybody know what ABC data is? And I'll come back to questions. No? ABC, okay, so your ABC is your, is your uh, antecedent, okay? Antecedent, behavior, and the reason why, okay? All right, so what what caused that? So it could be just behavior of the kiddo, all right? What you got back there, Ms. Joyce? Uh, reasoning, how do you get access to things like this you have to be able to do on the reasoning program? So any kiddo that, that is, that qualifies as ED or has redirection services should, should be put into rethink. Okay. ED Every ED student should be put into rethink. Now you won't have access for, for that as a as a gen ed teacher. Okay. That'll only be access for special education. Do I contact that that, that case manager? Yes, ma'am. Good question. All right. So what are some other ways that we can find baseline data? What are some other ways we can find baseline data inside your classrooms? I'm sorry, I was just going to ask you about all the programs listed. I know I can get some things off the Google form. Yeah. Of the forms and the. Is there any place else I can find housed? Which, which, which one are you talking about? You have like Roby Bags, you have um, yep. all these things here that I haven't been exposed to. So Roby Max is math, is special education math. But you have benchmarks, you have scars. You have a lot of things inside your classroom on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So whatever that you have to be able to find that. This is just a general statement that I can't look today or the other day while I was, while I was working on it. So it's not exclusive to that, okay? Even though that's good information. Which, by the way, you're going to learn a lot of stuff in AWARE in a minute, using AWARE to be able to find all this information. We're going to be able to upload the accommodations that you have into AWARE. Once we upload them into AWARE, it'll populate inside your test and things like that. Okay, they're going to show you some of that stuff today. All right? So this will help out with some of this information as we go along. So that's why we're doing these paired together. All right. So we talked about documentation. Okay? So we are responsible for documentation of how we're, how we're meeting these kids' needs. Okay, the old adage of special education is if it not documented, it didn't happen. Okay, and because how can we prove that it didn't happen if it's not documented? Okay, unfortunately, that's the time to, that's the time to live in, right? Everybody's looking for a paycheck. So, notebooks, folders, data charts, eSped uh, data sheets, easy sped tracker, we're probably doing shop on that one. So, easy sped tracker is a program special education purchase uh, for us to be able to document the amount of minutes that's spent with every single student that the, kid, that the co, uh, case manager, not the case manager, the um, co-teachers work with. It's a lot, right? So if I sit down and I sit with Andy for two minutes, okay, and I sit down with Ashlyn for five minutes, and I sit with, with Ms. Garrison for 15 minutes, I have to document each and every one of those after that class period's over with to be able to show how much needs, how much that kid needs on a daily basis, right? That's why it's important to be able to get whatever information we can from you as well, okay? All right, um, rethink electronic portfolio, portfolio, okay? So what works for you? Anybody use anything different in their class that works for them? Be able to document those things? What, what would a notebook look like? Is that okay, so a notebook could be um, Miss um, Jean Lee Taylor. She had a special education notebook that when you opened it up, it had the students' names with split IEPs, and then it had the modified assignments that they should have taken if they were there. And if they didn't take it, it was also in there. Okay, so whatever it was, so the kid was absent today, he'd come in, open it up to his, he's got a modified assignment already sitting there, opens it up, gives it to him, and brings it back. That could be our documentation that we've actually provided those services, and it was a modified test that was given to them. Okay? Um, yeah, say it again. Yes, documented Skyward. There you go. And Aware. Aware is a great place. Guys, it's going to end up being our, our housing unit for everything. 
Okay. Question. You said about the the easy EastFed data easy tracker. tracker, right? So they're doing that after class, not during class? We should be doing it throughout, the, well, it's going to be throughout the class because it's going to be hard to be able to track okay. that during. Okay. And they don't necessarily have to use that. Whatever works best for our case managers is what we want them to use. Okay. It doesn't so necessarily have to be that like program. On but a chip, like they can carry around a clipboard and write down. That's right. Okay. Now, the district's pushing that because they paid a lot of money for it. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean it necessarily works for us, but that's what they're asking for because they did pay a lot of money. So Marie Danish uh, had an electronic portfolio that was out of this world. I mean, it was fantastic that she used. And so she, she probably has a copy of that if you'd like to see that. Okay. All right. All right, now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of it. All right, current status report. All right, now a CSR. A CSR is used to build the critical components of an arm. The CSR will support these strengths and the needs in, the, uh, in academic form, that's the key word, in academic form, uh, so we can build a, a present levels of academic and functional performance, which builds the academic goals with accommodation modifications for the student's academic success, okay? So academic form is not, he's a nice kid, he dresses well, he's well behaved in class. That's good information to have, okay? But it's not an academic form, right? How does a kid look inside class on tasks? Okay, how are we meeting his needs? What are his needs? Okay, are his needs that he needs more accommodations, less modifications? Okay, what does that look like in class? And what data do you have to support that? Okay, we have to have the data to support a change in, in uh, placement as well. It's gonna come out of this. So if you have a kid that may be in a co-teach modified class right now, in Coach Severin's class, but you're like, hey, this kid can't handle his, he can't handle it, it's too much, okay? We have to know what data supports him to go to resource, okay? Or you're in a science class and we don't offer resource in that, but you may need to get, you may, you may need to be in an ALE class, okay? That happens. Fortunately, it does. Our kids come here and sometimes they need to go to ALE science or social studies. Um, if a kid is succeeding in a regular class, but they are, are they have an IEP and they need to go to the trophy? They can't, yeah, they can be. They, they, they sure can be. But can they stay in the regular class? Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's still considered a general education setting. So even if a kid has an IHP, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be co-teach. Okay. They could be in class support, they could just be what we call mainstream monitor. So mainstream monitor is, is if they're on your regular roll sheet mm -hmm. and they're not receiving anything but accommodations in that class. They don't need the support of another teacher. But if it says co-teach? It says co-teach, they need to be in a co-teach class. Doing good. That's right. Yeah, they need to be in there. Yeah. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, I'm happy to contact you confidence. Okay. <laughs> uh, con contact us or the case manager and we'll get that fixed for you. All right. Okay? And we'll, we'll go to the counselor for you. All right. So why is the CSR and progress monitoring so important? A couple reasons. To provide specific feedback back about instructional strategies that have been effective uh, based on classroom data and observations. Right? It's also important to know what's been ineffective with them. Right? Does a kid utilize all their accommodations and modifications? If they don't, guys, it is just as unethical to mod over modify for a kid than it is to under modify for a kid. Okay? And in all honesty, guys, they come to us from middle school with every accommodation in the book. They do. I mean, and it's, and it's this whole, they come from elementary with it, they keep it all the way through. Our goal is, is that we want to wing as many kids off those modifications as we can because we want our kids to be college and career ready, right? And then our, and then our campus drive that's what we want to do okay so the less modifications that we can that we can have those kids in the better off our kids are going to be in the long run okay um, plus if a kid is modified guys we got to change their grad they got to change their grad code and that means a lot for a kid so if a kid is modified we have to change their graduation code whether they graduate based on an IEP instead of based on what they actually did inside your class okay so let's say we have a kid that's modified in all four core subjects okay he modified all, all four courses, so he has to graduate, not like the other students, but he graduates through his IEP. He graduates through an art meeting instead of through what happens in your class, okay? We don't want our students to have to do that. We don't want our students to be able to earn what they get inside their class because that's what they're gonna have to do later on in life. So if the kid can hang, can hang with alpha modifications, that's what we wanna do. It's better for our campus and it's better for the kid, okay? All right, next one. Encourage, it encourages effective monitoring to determine any adjustments needed to, to take uh, for the student. All right, so 
after two unsuccessful time periods of, of lack of success, we should be having a meeting, whether it's a parent meeting, whether it's an R, to discuss how we're gonna meet this kid's needs. So if he's unsuccessful, we need to be sure that we're meeting needs, okay? Otherwise, how can we show good faith that we've done anything positive for this kid, right? We just kind of throw him in the water and said, good luck, hope you can swim, okay? We don't, we don't want to do that to any kid. We wouldn't want that for our kids, and that's how I like to think about it is. I wouldn't want it for my kids if my kids had a disability to be in that same classroom and not have what they need to be successful, okay? So after two progress monitoring cycles, we need to make be sure that we're coming back. Let the case managers know, hey, we've been two cycles away from it. We need, he hasn't made progress in two cycles. We need to come back and have an R meeting or a parent conference to be able to see how we're gonna help this kid. Even if it's a staffing, it doesn't necessarily have to be an R. We can do a staffing. Hey, how are we meeting this kid's needs? And let's roll along through that, okay? And again, once again, it's always about a good faith effort to help the kid. And like that's the next one. So good faith effort, the meeting the student's IEP goals. And then to provide documentation that a student has received a free and appropriate public education, okay? If you don't know what faith is, faith is the, the most sued reason in the state of Texas, okay? Free and appropriate public education. If, you, if we do not provide um, what the paperwork says for, for a student, okay? We are denying them a faith. We're denying them a free and appropriate public, public education. Okay? If we have denied them of services in any form or fashion, let's say that we, um, let's say that, that they didn't get modifications for a semester. Okay? We've denied them of that. And the only way that we can recoup that is either one, one, they take us back to due process, we go through the court process, okay, and we have to go to court over it, or you end up having to offer what they call compensatory services, okay? Compensatory services is our good faith effort to say, hey, we screwed up, we didn't offer you services during this time, now on the school's dime, we're gonna educate you and we give you the special education services that you did not receive inside your classroom. So the campus has to pay for a teacher, supposed to be outside of school hours, to be able to recoup that, that, uh, that time. Okay, so if it's, student gets 15 minutes, um, 15 minutes special education services in each class for five days a week. It's 15 times five for every how many weeks it is that we miss our special education services. Okay? And that's, once again, we're paying for that by our campus funds, not district funds. So it makes it a big deal, right? Makes it a huge deal whenever you start talking about taking out of, out of what we can do best for our kids and we can do it the first time when it's in our kids, when they're already in our classroom. Okay? All right, any questions about faith? I know it's, Loom and gloom. That's what special education is these days. All right. So now, sample of the CSR. Once again, it's on your it's on your paper. Okay, it's on your paper. So it's a little small. Uh, but guys, this is your way of telling us what the kids needs inside your class. Okay. So like, I'll read the bottom for you. It says, based on recent recent benchmark data, the student is able to analyze the effects of diction and imagery within a poll. Four out of five questions answered correctly. Student is able to edit drafts for grammar, mechanics, and spelling. Two out of three questions answered correctly. Okay? That's, that's a lot of data, right? And that's what you're looking for, okay? You're looking for something that's going to be detailed on where the student is at at that time. Where is he? Right? That's where he's at. How are, so we now we know where he's at, and then what are we going to address? Okay? Up at the top, okay? Up at the top, it says currently used, and recommended, okay? Guys, it's your class. You see these kids and know these kids a lot better than the case managers do, unless the case manager's in your class, okay? We need to know how they effectively work in your class, okay? If I ask uh, Ms. Stringer what it looks like in world geography in Ms. Hawk's class, they, she couldn't tell you, right? She's not in there, okay? And that goes for everyone that's in here. We don't know the other content. We have to get your information because you're the content expert. Okay, we are by no means a content expert a lot of times in, in the classes that, that we co-teach in, okay? Uh, but it works for us. And so we have to be sure that this is your input on how we're gonna meet this kid's needs, okay? Once again, we're gonna start taking away those modifications if they don't need them. Start taking away those accommodations if they don't need them. All right, start working those things down to where that our kids can be a lot more independent, okay? All right, now this is, is, is the next one. 
okay? We need to be sure that our weakness is placed in Teak's form, okay? Why? Because that's where we have to write the goal. Once again, we're not the content master inside your area, okay? So how are we gonna meet that kid's needs and be able to build off that strength that they have to make this weakness now the next strength for next year? Is it Could be, it could be. You know, it, so this one isn't, this, this, this one is, yeah, there's, there's a difference. Um, so they won't have us next year. So no, and it needs to be broad. So it needs to be something you can build off of. I'm glad you brought like that up. Analyze the graph or something like that. It can be, okay. yeah. So I'm glad you said that. Ms. 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 Gonzalez brings up a great point. Okay, so, so you wanna make your, your teats, you wanna pick a teat that is gonna be as broad as possible. And the reason you want to make it as broad as possible is if I find a teak that we're going to work on the first two weeks of school, what are we monitoring the other weeks of school or until you have the next arm, right? Find, we need to find a teak that works for you as well as what they can carry with them to the next. The hard one is going to be algebra to geometry. Math has process skills you can choose from that there are teaks. They're, they're the ones that are A.1. Um, and I know English and I think social studies have skill teaks. They do. That we have process. Yeah. Good. So, you can pick those so those would be great ones to pick. Yeah, because they're broad. Yeah. They're broad and they'll continue all the way through. That's kind of where we want to make our focus. So while we're speaking about skills, a student can be dis, uh, can have a disability in a number of areas. Okay, but it all ranges around math, English, and reading. There is no science and social studies disability. Okay. These are, this is why they're called it skills-based, okay? We've been asking for a resource, uh, resource science social studies forever. And they won't do it because they say that it's a skill, right? Math, reading, and writing are skills. Science social studies are not skills. That's what they're saying. So our argument has always been, okay, so, so they don't possess skills in English, writing, and math. Yeah, you want them to apply skills that they don't have into science and social studies. Makes very little sense, but, that, that, but that's where we're at, okay? And so that's why the skills-based teaks will help us to be able to open those up a little bit more, okay? All right, so compare the student's academic weakness to the, uh, their average grade level peers. Remember we talked about our data on how we're gonna find that? Sorry, real quick before we move on. Oh. It said if the student doesn't have a need, put none. If you put none there, you're basically telling me that student doesn't need to be modified anymore or accommodated and that they don't need those. Um, they don't need special education services. Need special education services. And which one? In, In the, the top. Weak top. So if you put none weakness. there, that's basically what you're telling yeah. us as case managers. And yeah, we'll need like prop, like prop will be data, data so to yeah. support it. and support So just, you know, if you don't have like a specific one, pick one of those broad topics and ones that really helps us. So how do I write these to help my kids are over accommodated, over service. And that's so, my biggest problem. So when we go back, it's on that one. So we so, check off what we want? Yeah, so 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 you check out what they currently use, okay? What's currently used inside class. You can recommend it. Now guys, whatever is on here doesn't mean that you can't modify it. Right? Right on there, refuses to use, does not need for science. Well you can take it off. Okay. Right? Dude, whatever that you need to be able to find out what best fits the kid. So if the kid is over accommodated, let us know. Let us know. Does not need market through whatever that you need to do. Can to we make also write that on comments? Sure. Comments. Yeah, you can write on the comments. You can write even on that page if you want to. That if it's not fillable, you can write it on that one. Okay. Oh, I went the wrong way. All right. So once again, uh, let me go back to the second one. Compare the students' academic weaknesses to the, their grade level peers. Okay, in writing, this area is a weakness for most E1 students in the area, uh, and we'll focus on for the entire year. Students scores lower than those of their peers. Okay, not a whole lot of data in there, but it tells us where they are according to their grade level peers. Okay, reading, plot development is an area that she, they scored lower than for their grade level peers. Okay, what does it look like with a Gen Ed student that doesn't get any, any type of support? Okay, next one, student performance with accommodations. Please use measurable data. Why does it need to be measurable? Yeah, well, we gotta be able to compare it exactly. And also, guys, we gotta be able to report this, okay? We gotta be able to report this. We have to know how we're gonna check the student's progress as we go along, okay? How are we showing a good faith effort to meet this kid's needs if we can't measure, okay? So the 
Uh, student is given a modified assessment for IP. However, when taking the benchmark without modifications, student scores higher than some of his peers. Accommodations are needed, and however, do not feel that a, a, a modifications are needed for English. Okay? We just had that question, right? So we can write it wherever that we need to. It just needs to be blatantly obvious as to what the kid needs. Okay? See how Ms. Collins can tell us? Same spot. Okay? All right. They have behavior concerns. Guys, we have the largest population of ED kids in the district. I know I say this at everything that we do. Okay, we have a very, very high number of, of ED kids. Okay, a lot of it is our is our circumstances, unfortunately, that our kids grow up in. But we have to be sure that we're documenting these and not just focusing on that. Okay, yes, behavior does play a big part inside our classrooms on how we can educate these kids. It does, and we all know that. But it can't be the main focus. We need to look at academics separate from behavior. Okay, what behavior is hindering this kid from making progress? Okay, is it is it elopement issues? Is it is it yelling and cussing, is it throwing chairs, is it whatever that it may be? Is it just sleeping? What behavior concerns do you have for that kid to be able to get there? Okay? All right, attendance is good. How you can separate the, their behavior from their academics because if their behavior is actually hindering them from their academics, then how are we supposed to teach them? But, but, but if you have baseline data that says where they are on anything, if you have anything that says where the kid is at, you have kids that do absolutely nothing in class, I get that. We may have to go back to the previous information that we had before and see where they were before. If you have nothing, kid won't do anything, that needs to be noted. Don't have any information, student doesn't come to class, whatever it may be. But we have to make good faith effort as classroom teachers, because we're all the ones responsible for it, to find out, to meet that kid where he's at. Even if it's a side assessment, to say, hey, I don't know where you're at, you haven't done anything. I need to know where you are. Alternative assignment, anything to be able to find where that kid is. Because just putting it up there, the kid doesn't do anything in class, what, how does that help the kid, right? Because we don't know where to start. Maybe he's in a wrong class, okay? Maybe he's in a science class. He's in, he's in your class, Ms. Finley, in science, but he's supposed to be an ALE. Well, he's not doing anything because the kid can't read or write, okay? We don't know those things unless we can find where the kid is. And like I said, unfortunately, we found kids that are sitting in gen ed classes. Hell, they registered a kid and put in free AP something the other day, and he was an ALE kid. That's uh, no lie, okay? <laughs> so it, it happens. Okay, kids come in all the time without without information, um, registering for class, and they just they look at their star scores and go, hey, kid passed star, it was star alt. But they don't, it's not noted that way. And so they don't know. And so sometimes kids get placed wrong and we just need to know that information. If they won't do it, like I said, find something to be able to get. Okay? All right. How many days have the student missed in your class? Okay. Benchmark scores there at the bottom. Once again, this is good information because we're gonna build this in our class. As we go along for our present levels of academic and functional performance, that information is gonna be good information for us to have to be able to build for the kid. Okay, where is he according to his grade level peers? That's getting right back to it. All right, any modifications? If they're using or if they're not using, once again, I do not feel modifications are needed to be able to maintain, uh, maintain the same pace as others. Okay, if they're in modified, don't need it, that's what we're gonna document. Okay, now we're gonna get to the real heart of why we're here, okay? Is that bottom piece right down there, okay? So, STAR recommendations. There's been a lot of talk about STAR. Yes, we're on the tip, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for that campus improvement always, right? Guys, if you think that a kiddo, in your professional opinion, would benefit from not participating in the STAR, this is where we, where we note it, okay? This is where we're gonna note it. Once again, you are the teacher of record, you are the teacher that knows more about the content than anybody else in that room, okay? You have to note it right here so that we know, the people that aren't in there, as to whether we think that your professional recommendation is take it or don't take it, okay? So I can directly see if some of my kids have not taken bio. If I have a kid who I do not think will be successful there, am I making that judgment this no. year? No, 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 but, so, okay, so we, we can't predetermine whether a student will pass or fail a star, or anything, it can be a class. We can never predetermine that, okay? But what we can say is, is I think the kid would benefit his next year into taking biology online with these accommodations. Okay? Okay, so I have to recommend for these things for sure. next year. That's right. So they have to at least take the test. That's right. Correct? Yeah, so so districts, or not districts, uh, TEA law says that you have to participate at least once. Students have to meet participation requirements to for the STAR. They don't necessarily have to pass it. They have to meet participation requirements and an ARD committee can accept them from taking the exam. 
So my other half of my kids are sophomores who've taken the stars and may not have passed. And when I get my CSRs, I can know that this year would probably not be a good yep. year. Did we take bio? Yep. Okay. Yep. And getting that to the case manager as early as possible. So if you don't think so and they don't take it in December, mm -hmm. we can get it to them and have a review before December before they take it the second time. Okay. okay? Now, our modified kids, a lot of times, guys, our modified kids, our resource kids, it's not going to be a question. It just needs to be a, hey, guys, they're, they're nowhere close. They're, our kids can't handle it. Now, accommodated kid, that needs to be a discussion because that does change their graduation requirements. Okay? It does change how the kid graduates. It changes their graduation plan. Okay? A modified kid, it's already going to be changed. The graduation code's already changed. So for the modified kiddos, they don't even have to meet the limit 10? No, 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 they have to, they have to meet the 2010. Oh, okay, okay. They got to participate in any of them, okay. in all of them. Okay, including our ALE kids. Are the ALE kids even have to participate in those? And actually, if an ALE kid does not pass the STAR, STAR ALT, they, they're supposed to retest as you come back and arm them out of it, which I can kind of see, you know, because you're trying to hold them as accountable as you are everybody else, but still an ALE kid, right? Ms. Finley, you got a question? Why in the So, so, so that, that used to be that used to be the norm. So the norm used to be that they wanted to say that we're showing a good faith effort as a district to be able to say that we've tried for this kid and not given up on him after one exam. And I can see that from a parent standpoint. But when it comes down to your accountability as a district, a lot of times it's like, eh, pass or not pass, we need to be sure we're doing what's best, even and even best for the kid. You know, well, some of have to take the exam. They're like five points off. Yeah. And, and some of our kids, parents don't want them to stop. Parents don't want them not to take the test. They don't want them to be enabled for whatever reason. Um, and we've had kids that have not passed a uh, not passed a grade level since they were in kindergarten that are now in freshman. They have never passed any class since they were in but they're here, and you're expected to educate them the same way you do everybody else, and then when they get here, they have to earn credits. Okay, that's, that's hard to believe, isn't it? It's really hard to believe, but those are the same kids that are taking these tests. We've seen it. I, and I'm so, sure you have seen it. So my question is, why, are, why aren't parents, because there is a way that parents can actually exempt their child from taking the test by, by petitioning the TEA. Why are they not being told about that option? So not high school, right? So, so that, that, that's... At, at the high school level, are they? So, Yes. But, yeah, so, but that's not an option that, that we can say as an ARP committee that that's okay for us to pursue. So as an ARP committee, that's not a decision that we can make. That's nothing, that's nothing that we can push on to a parent. It's like we can't say to a parent, hey, it's best if you just take your kid over here to the premiere. No, but then, we want but to why say why that. why are we asking, why are we not presenting like everything else, what all the options are? So as far as special education services, we would, we would actually be denying them of a free and appropriate public education because you haven't given them the full scope and given them the option to be able to do that. So if you're telling them, hey, you're not gonna pass, we're gonna predetermine that you're not gonna pass, you can just go ahead and go over there and not take a test and, and petition it. You may be in violation of faith. And that affects their college, right? Mm -hmm. It does. It does. It affects their college uh, as a, a modified kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Modified, um, and they pass all kinds of like, Still everything. change the grade code. Still IP. Still IP grade code. So it all just goes down the mountain. Yeah. So, so coach had a great, great question. Okay, so. So, yeah, that's, that's right. So if, if a kiddo is modified and he has passed all five stars, but he's modified, does it still change his grad code? It does. It does. It still changes grad code. That kid, even though he passed all five stars, he is still going to be an IEP graduate. I mean, that's, that's the way it is, okay? Because he did not get the full scope of the curriculum because his curriculum was modified for him. And that's between, the difference is between to a two-year, you have to go to a community college. That's, that's right. Well, and, unless, except for like UTSA. UTSA will take students that, that have not passed all, all five stars. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm there, there are some. Like that to R and R that's right. And, and we ought to be, hang on one second, we ought to be adjusting those kids. So if you see a kiddo that is, like Coach was talking about, that has passed these stars and doing well, guys, we ought to be changing those guys to accommodate it so they don't have to graduate on a different grad plan. So yeah. I, I just have an art that had a kid who's a senior. He had been probably changed last year to a non-modified curriculum. At what critical moment can we change that so they can not, so they're not minimum? Sophomore year. So, so if they pass all their stars in freshman year, sophomore year, that that's the most critical yeah. time. Because I don't think you can change it, either. No, yeah, it's so too late. yes, well, it's not too late. We still change them for the best interest of the kid, but, can they but it's not going to change their grad code. Right. Anything after their sophomore year is going to keep their grad code the same. 
and really that, that, that's actually kind of been a campus level decision because um, uh, the, the district has said if a kid has one modified class while they're in high school, one modified class, they are a 54 graduate, 54 or 55, uh, 56 or 57 graduate, which means they graduate on IEP, okay? But every kid from middle school comes up has modifications. Yeah. It's just the way it is. So we want to give them an opportunity. So we've made the campus decision that we're going to give them to the end of their sophomore year to show us that they don't need modifications so we start bringing those things on. Okay? Okay. All right? Does that help a little bit? All right. <coughs> All right. So I don't have a whole heck of a lot of time. So this is a sample flat. Okay? Um, I'm not going to read all of it to you. Once again, you can see that, guys, there's a lot of information. This is half of the plaf, and that's the other half of the plaf. Okay? Guys, we need a lot of information to be able to know our kids. Okay? So when a kid transfers, and our kids do, you want them to go from one setting to the next setting and have the exact same comparable services where the kid doesn't fall behind. As little information as we have in these, it can, it can hurt the kid no matter where that they go. You want it to be as seamless as possible, so when they check into another school, you know how, to, how that school can meet that kid's needs. We know, okay? But then what happens next year whenever that they move up grade level? Once again, now we don't know the kid, right? So they go from, from, um, from algebra to geometry. We need to be sure that we know these kids and how we're gonna meet them, and this is the best place to do it, it's our plat. This is where the kid was last year when we had his R, and let's, let's take another assessment and see where he's at, okay? Okay, goal sample. All right, by the next year, ARD meeting, given scaffold instruction, guided practice, students will differentiate, will differentiate between, uh, between locate and use valid primary, secondary sources, such as computer software interviews, a whole lot of stuff, okay? Once again, information that you gave us goes into the goal, all right, in that form. Once again, if you tell us the kid dresses nice and he's a nice kid to have in class, that's hard to put in goal form as he rolls along through our class. All right. All right. So I'm not gonna hit on this all that lot. So art committees. This this is this is just this is my personal plug. All right. <laughs> While well, I got your attention, uh, art committee requires various participants to, uh, by law to attend different types of meetings. Okay. So for every single annual ARD that you have, you must have a general education teacher, special education teacher, administrator, <laughs> administrator CTE rep, parent, student. The only time that this changes is for a senior. Okay. Or an ALE student. Okay, so if it is a senior, we do not have to have a CTE rep, all right? If it's an ALE student, we're not gonna have a gen ed teacher because they have no educational interest in that student, okay? Then we have to add in LPAC rep and translator, okay, for those kiddos that are, that are ELL. And the reason I bring this up is, is because, you know, we always get these, 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 these things back saying, well, I can't come to this, I can't do this, I can't do that. Guys, that is a lot of moving parts inside an ARD meeting, okay? It's a lot of people that are invited to, to come, okay? We've even asked uh, Ms. Tovar, our secretary, to start adding in those 30 minutes before you get a monitor the computer, 30 minutes before when you get the invite. So maybe that helps us try to get there on time, okay? Because it looks really unprofessional for us as a campus to be sitting in an ARD waiting on somebody that forgot about the meeting, okay? We need to be sure that we're where we need to be on time. Like I said, I'm not trying to lecture, we're all professionals. Don't take it that way. Just know what it comes from, from our end of it, and looking at it, when you're sitting there face to face with a parent going, yeah, I don't know where they're at, I can't find them. I gotta go search a campus. Yeah. And we're running. Yeah, we're running around campus trying to find somebody that knows that we have a meeting, right? It doesn't look good at the campus. And we are all about customer service, or should be all about customer service, okay? Our students are our customers, and we have to do what we can to be able to make them successful while they're here, all right? And one thing is that we're gonna be there to meet their educational needs, okay? All right. And then, once again, art invite isn't really an invite. Okay, it's not really an invite. We're just we're, we're telling you when it is. All right, all right. Thank y'all for coming. Appreciate. It. Be sure you signed in. I know you got to go across the hall. Real quick, on that, if you're gonna be out, like you get sick and you know you have an art, let your dean know, or like let somebody know, like, hey, I was supposed to be out sick. My kid's yeah. out sick. Whatever. I had an art, so we can get with them and be like. They're out sick today. What can we do? It just makes it a little easier. Yeah, please. Please. That way we're not sitting there at the time of meetings going, oh, they're out today. All right, thank you all. Appreciate it. Like I said, be sure you signed in. Be candy. Take it. I need it.